Hi everyone, my name is James. Welcome to episode 8 of Oh My Malware. This is a channel where we grab real malware samples and we run them, just as if users would if they happen to be fished or receive them via any means necessary. Uh, the whole purpose behind this channel is to see what coverage we would get if we were running Elastic Security with the Elastic Defend integration, which comes bundled in by default uh, with any installation of Elastic. Today we're going to take a look at our first macOS sample. Uh, particularly, there's been uh, this Amos Stealer variant, so Atomic macOS Stealer. Uh, so we're going to take a look at that today. We're going to run it and see what output we get within uh, Elastic Security. Uh, as always, I like to start from the, the virus total page for the sample we'll be using today. And this is always linked from the onmymalware.com website, so you can uh, reference it at any point in time. So let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, let me bring up my virtual machines. Uh, as usual, we to save time, we run the sample on two machines at the same time, one in detection only mode, which means we'll just passively observe what's happening and get alerted on it. The other one in prevention mode. So if there is any potential malicious activity we can block, uh, the policy is set to go ahead and block it, which is what you would typically have in a production context. So uh, I've downloaded the sample. You can see it's this, this, this uh, disk image over here. Let's go ahead and open it up. Uh, and you can see as a user, hopefully you can see that, um, it, the user is presented with you know, makeshift fake instructions about what they should be doing for this uh, setup, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and follow that. Um, Mac OS is probably going to complain because of the developer stuff. Uh, it is, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, allow that. We already got some detection there. But let's go ahead and allow this. Open anyway. And we'll open that. And that's going to start again. I'm probably going to get a duplicate alert here for this. Uh, you can see this bit of malware is uh, asking me for my password. And again, remember, this is a stealer. So this is one of the techniques they use. I believe this is powered by uh, OSA script. In fact, we got an alert for OSA script, which is macOS's uh, automation platform, like scripting platform. Um, let's put in my password here just so we let the malware do its thing. And we'll do the same on the prevention machine. Let's just give it everything it needs to work. Probably gonna have the exact same thing here. Yep, it's the exact same thing we did before on the detection machine, privacy and security. Open anyway. Excellent. Well, here we've got the prevention stuff. Probably it's not going to ask me for the password because it looks like that sample has already been prevented from running. And and this, I think this is expected from the sample. It just gives the user like a, a, a fake error message that we couldn't install your application. It's okay. So now that we've done that, we've run it on both machines. Uh, as usual, what I like to do is uh, give the sample enough time to do whatever it needs to do, give the rules within Elastic Security enough time to run based off of their schedule. Um, so again, 10 to 15 minutes, I'll cut the video here and I will come back right after that. Okay, we are back and we are now within uh, Kibana. As you can see, we've had uh, 11 alerts overall. It's been just about 10 minutes more or less. And um, as we typically expect, we have the single alert on the prevention machine. Uh, what we, you know, we, we immediately saw that malware being prevented. And then we have 10 alerts for the detection machine. And I'm going to go ahead and start looking at the detection alerts first. Uh, you notice in previous episodes, I would exclude the prevention machine. But now since we have alert grouping in Kibana, I don't have to. It makes this even easier, one step less. And let's take a look at what we have. Um, and you notice here, as always, it's sorted by the original timestamp. So first thing we have is the malware detection alert. Uh, this was the first thing we saw. Uh, I did remove the, by the way, the, the extra alerts we got until we uh, enabled the app to run within security. No point having those show up twice. 
Uh, so let's take a look at this malware detection alert here. We can see basically um, root on the host was de detected executing a malicious process, the mygoapplication.app. This is interesting. This, um, this app was actually written in Go as a way of um, um, limiting detection. Uh, but we have it covered, it seems, with Elastic. That's really good to know. Uh, and you can see then here all the process arguments, pretty much where it was executed from. This was, remember, as soon as we did the right-click open that, that setup dot app. Um, but yeah, this was just a, you know, malware detection alert. Um, easy enough to, to understand and, and digest. Let's go on to the next one. So we have two here which are very, very similar. One is this um, prompt for credentials with I say OSA script. I don't know if you say OSA script or whatever, OSA script. Um, and then we have the similar uh, endpoint behavior rule. Right? So this one is uh, from the sim side, and this is from the endpoint side. Let's take a look at the sim one first, because it's first in the list. Uh, you can see there were just a few milliseconds apart here. Uh, but you can see basically uh, OSA script was run with the argument uh, to you know prompt for a dialogue, pretty much what we saw before. and. Um, to try and get people to put in their password. Uh, so you can see here pretty much all the arguments. Uh, very, very easy to understand why this was detected. Uh, basically, if we look at um, the rule query, just so you can see what the, the query crafted is actually looking for. I always like to do this, and uh, Elastic will make it easy because everything's open. Uh, so basically, yeah, any, any, any start attempt of OSA script with um, display dialog password in the in the actual command line. So um, very very simple to understand why that was picked up. Uh, natural language detections over there is how I like to call them. Uh, okay, so that makes sense. We got that. Um, probably the behavior is looking for the exact same thing. Um, as always, remember I link to all the rule definitions from onmymapper.com for the. Endpoint behavior rules or prevention rules, these all live in our GitHub repository, so I, I link them all there so you can see that query as it lives, but it's pr probably going to be the exact same uh, qu query or very, very, very close. Uh, so you can see just because the user was prompted for credentials and we, we detected that behavior. Now, typically, you know, why this was uh, prompted for um, is to do uh, malicious stuff, right? So you can see then we have uh, access to keychain directories. And uh, funny enough, you can see within the arguments here, again, this was a sim rule, by the way, uh, we had a new binary as well here. Um, so this Unix one uh, process name, which later on we detected as manual. Uh, this is the password. It's a temporary password. Don't worry. I don't use this anywhere else. Um, or you can try. It doesn't matter. But you can see basically that is in the command line arguments. And um, yeah, we picked it up because it tries to access this login keychain database, uh, which is where, uh, for those of you who use macOS, that is where your keychain lives. And if you have access to that, basically, um, and that's, that's the end of the line, right? You've got access to all the passwords that are potentially saved in that keychain. Uh, we'll take a look at later what this did. I'll look at the process tree, but um, yeah, it's fairly obvious why this was detected. Again, what I'll do is just real quickly take a look at that rule definition. Yeah, this is a bit more extensive, like a few more keywords here and there. Yeah, but specifically because we, yeah, it was looking at that login.keychain-db, right? So uh, very easy to understand why that happened. Okay, and then we had a couple of malware detection alerts here, a few different ones. So it's all based off of that Unix one file, which is different to the initial malware that we detected, which is this MyGo application. So it seems like we had um, several layers of malware detection here. So this was um, permission changing. So it gave it our read, write, and execute access to the world, 777, uh, for, you know, we, we know why it wanted to do that, of course, basically uh, just being able to run um, with uh, as much flexibility as possible there. And then after it changed permissions, it ran it. So you can see it being run over there via the initial uh, parent process. This is as we expect. And then it 
must have been some modifications there, probably something like uh, naming or something like that. Uh, and then we have two alerts, two sim alerts for access to keychains credential directory, similar to what we, uh, not similar, identical to what we saw before, probably um, uh, maybe a different directory, actually, no, it's the same one. Uh, it probably kept doing uh, different accesses there. Yeah, it probably just kept going and kept trying to do what it needed to do. And then we had one more malware detection alert. Yeah, you can see now it called that binary Unix one uh, with a few additional parameters. So it looks like, um, yeah, basically this is what we detected here, access to keychain credential directory. So it's all it's all tied together. I, I did not mean to click that. I'll go back to it. Yeah, so this is, you know, it's, it basically we detected the, the binary being run to access those credential directories. So um, again, we had one, two, three, four, five malware alerts, uh, malicious behavior alert, and then a couple of uh, SIM detection alerts here. Um, let's take a look at the event analyzer. So you can see from the start, we have the MyGo application being invoked. Well, launch D, right? This is me uh, opening the MyGo application. Uh, you also see here there's two network connections that were made. If I'm not mistaken, this is the C2 communication. Let's just take a look here. You can see it's being made to this IP address, which happens to be in Russia. Um, we can actually dive a bit deeper into that to see what might have been sent. Uh, then we can see the Unix uh, Unix 1 binary, or whatever it was. Uh, you can see, again, trying to access the keychains. And one more time, uh, it doing that. Uh, so this, from what I've read, this uh, Amos Steeler, I'm calling it Amos, or Amos, depending on, on your accent. Um, this try to, it, it tries to steal everything. This is pretty much a blank VM, right? So there isn't much for it to steal, but um, it's a browser, anything you have stored in the browser, whether it's credit card information, passwords, all that good stuff. Um, even files, that's why it wanted, if you not remember, access to the desktop and uh, the documents directories. So it, it does try to steal everything. And then, if I'm not mistaken, it reports all of that back to a C2 server. Um, what I'll do is really quick, uh, I do want to check those network attempts to see if we can see any more detail about that C2 communication. I'm just gonna grab this IP address here and we'll use our handy timeline to search for it. Yeah, so there's a lot. Um, it's all over port 80. So we might be able to see the actual HTTP payload. So I'm just do and type HTTP. Uh, by the way, the, the, way, the reason I'm able to do this is along with Elastic Defend, we also have the network packet capture integration. Uh, while Elastic Defend does collect, uh, obviously, network attempts, network packet capture gives you that same connection over the wire. So literally what's passed through the interface. So like that, you get the best of both worlds, what, what the kernel is saying with our system extension, and then what the, the interface is saying via network packet capture. Uh, you can see we have that network request, N uh, NPC network packet capture, um, also collects the full payload. So I just want to see what, uh, what might be in the contents here. So you can see we have all the headers, Oh, here we go. What's this? Right, so you can see here there's actually a very nice big payload. Yeah, so we parsed out the URL query. This was a pretty big value. And it made a post request to this slash send log to this uh, amosmalware.ru. Um, I think I have this in a better looking field. I'll just copy this. Remember, I always like using the the notes field for this kind of stuff. So I'll just format it as markdown. And we'll preview it here, we don't have to save it. Uh, to me, this is much easier to read. Uh, and you can see basically it's sending a B base64 uh, encoded value with some additional parameters like build ID and user. 
so this is probably everything it collected um, as far as I've looked into and read it's uh, base 64 encoded compressed content so I'm not, I'm not gonna go and bother to, to do that if you did want to go ahead uh, but this was basically everything it managed to capture and steal essentially from hence hence the the stealer uh, terminology okay so that was the detection uh, machine so just to recap we had 10 alerts there um, f one two three four five six uh, from the endpoint side you know our, our malicious behaviors and our malware detection and then we had uh, five from the sim very good um prevention is going to be really short right so we had one prevention alert here uh, malware prevention again the pretty much instantaneously picking up that binary the go application dot app uh, binary and not even allowing it to run so uh, great that's exactly what you would want to see in uh, production so uh, we blocked that too very good so um that was it for episode eight thank you all very much for watching um we're not gonna have such a big gap between the next episode uh you might tell i have a slightly different setup now i'm actually showing my face i hope that's enjoyable um so expect a regular cadence of these episodes a, a more regular cadence of these episodes going forward uh, if you do like this content please go ahead and subscribe and share it with your networks um, the whole reason is I just want this to get into the hands that are interested in watching it. That's all. Uh, subscription, clicking that subscribe button really helps. Uh, commenting really helps. Um, and yeah, hopefully uh, anyone watching this, this was really useful. Again, my name is James. Uh, stay safe.